So far in the course, we focused on molecules that are pretty well described by a localized molecular orbital paradigm that uses natural bond orbitals on one or two atoms. This is nice because we can then connect Lewis structures to the orbital picture. But this doesn't work for all molecules, and we've actually hinted at this already. Molecules characterized by resonance have strong electron delocalization and require multiple Lewis structures to really describe completely. Delocalized pi systems are heavily delocalized molecules in which we really can't get away with using a localized molecular orbital picture. So in this lesson, we're going to return to discussions of resonance that we had previously, look at electron delocalization in more detail, and explore some of the implications of electron delocalization in delocalized pi systems, which are molecules that contain long chains of sp or sp2 hybridized atoms whose p orbitals overlap to form highly delocalized molecular orbitals. This has some interesting consequences. These molecules are more stable than, say, localized one or two electron pi systems. They also have interesting optical properties. They're often colored, while most mo organic molecules are not. And they display interesting electronic properties because as we make longer and longer pi systems, we can start to get into territory where organic molecules are conductive and act like semiconductors. So in this lesson, we're going to first introduce pi systems, discuss their orbital structure and their interesting properties and reactivity, and then we're going to move into aromaticity, which is an especially stable example of a conjugated pi system. We're going to look at aromatic structure and then aromatic reactivity, both for all carbon aromatic systems like benzene and aromatic heterocycles, which we find in everything from nucleobases to the amino acids to conjugated polymers used in electronic applications. This slide gives you a sense of some of the important conjugated organic molecules that we'll see in this lesson and some of the general structural features of conjugated or delocalized pi systems in organic molecules. Benzene is a structure that we've seen before. And one thing worth noting is that we haven't really touched benzene within structures yet. It's relatively unreactive. Now that we've talked about reactions of alkenes, this is kind of remarkable because benzene has three double bonds within it. Why doesn't it react with electrophiles like Br2 in the way that a simple alkene would? We'll understand why by the end of this lesson. This molecule in the bottom right of the slide is a conjugated polymer consisting of repeating units that contain a conjugated system linked to each other. This particular molecule is known as poly-3-hexylthiophene and it's used in organic electronics. In essence, the conjugated system forms a kind of molecular wire along which electrons can travel. This means that this molecule and others like it, conjugated polymers, have conductive properties and can conduct electricity. The molecule at the top of the slide is beta-carotene. And beta-carotene is interesting because we find it in a biochemical context as an important visual absorbing molecule. In other words, it's colored. And this is relatively unique. You'll see in your lab courses that most organic molecules are either colorless or if they're in solid form, white. But beta-carotene and its derivative retinal, which is here below, are both colored. And retinal in particular is important because it's one of the absorbing compounds that we find within the eye. This molecule is one of those responsible for helping us see. Pretty much all of the interesting properties in these molecules can be related back to the fact that they contain delocalized pi systems. Very long chains of, in this case, carbon atoms, containing unhybridized p orbitals that overlap with each other to form highly delocalized molecular orbitals. Just think about the sheer number of resonance structures associated with the molecule beta-carotene. We can shift double bonds around in an extremely large number of ways to generate a variety of resonance structures indicating strong electron delocalization. Benzene is particularly unique because it's a cyclic conjugated system. And in fact, the same is true of the thiophene molecule within poly-3-hexylthiophene. In this lesson, we're going to look at the structures of delocalized pi systems and their reactivity to help explain some of these properties, such as their color, their lack of reactivity under normal conditions that engage alkenes, and their conductive properties. Let's begin by defining what exactly we mean by a delocalized pi system and learning how to identify them within organic molecules. Naturally, this is a prerequisite skill if we want to study delocalized pi systems. We have to be able to recognize them within organic structures. If you've been practicing identifying when resonance is relevant to a portion of a molecule, you'll have no problem identifying the structural elements of delocalized pi systems, which are in fact exactly the same as the structural determinants of resonance 
minus sigma bonds and sigma star antibonding orbitals. So we're looking for things like double bonds, triple bonds, lone pairs associated with sp or sp2 hybridized atoms so that the lone pair can occupy a p orbital, and six electron building blocks such as carbocations in which the empty orbital here is associated with an unhybridized p orbital. When these structural features are linked together, we end up with a series of atoms, these may be carbon or heteroatoms, on which adjacent p orbitals can overlap strongly in a pi type fashion, giving rise to highly delocalized molecular orbitals. And so the picture you should keep in mind when studying delocalized pi systems is one in which we have a number of p orbitals, one on each atom within the conjugated system, overlapping to form delocalized molecular orbitals like this. We define a delocalized pi system as a substructure within a molecule containing a series of three or more p orbitals overlapping in a side-on or what we've previously called pi-type fashion. And this sounds fancy, but this is just an orbital formalization of the resonance ideas that we've seen already. So the structural elements of delocalized pi systems are double and triple bonds, lone pairs contained in p orbitals, meaning the atom X must have either sp or sp2 hybridization, and it can assume this hybridization in order to put the lone pair in a p orbital if doing so would create a conjugated system. This is actually energetically favorable since it leads to delocalization of that pair of electrons. And six electron building blocks like carbocations, which are sp2 hybridized, but also contain an unhybridized p orbital that actually participates in the delocalized pi system. And one key point about delocalized pi systems is that, is that these structural elements must be directly connected. If there's an sp3 hybridized atom between two, say, sp2 hybridized atoms, that's not a conjugated system. The sp3 atom in the middle prevents delocalization and overlap of p orbitals. Another name for a delocalized pi system is a conjugated system, and we can say that the molecule as a whole displays conjugation. When these structural elements are linked to one another, the molecule has at least one, and often more than one, important alternative resonance form, indicating the delocalization of electrons over more than two atoms within the molecule. Let's look at some examples of conjugated pi systems now. You're going to notice that all of these are molecules that we would have identified as resonance active anyway. For example, the molecule shown here contains an oxygen with two lone pairs adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond. In order to establish a conjugated system, this oxygen assumes sp2 hybridization so that one of its lone pairs can occupy a p orbital. This is the orbital basis of drawing resonance curved arrows like this. And these curved arrows illustrate that the four electrons involved in resonance, two associated with the pi bond in the original structure and two associated with the lone pair, are delocalized over three atoms, the two carbons and the oxygen. Thus, the two carbons and the oxygen form a four electron delocalized pi system here. The amide functional group is analogous. The lone pair on nitrogen and the pi bond between carbon and oxygen are part of a three atom delocalized pi system consisting of the nitrogen carbon and oxygen. Here's yet another example that shows a lone pair adjacent to a carbon-carbon pi bond. And here, the nitrogen and two carbons linked by the double bond in the original structure form a three-atom pi system. Conjugated systems are not just confined to three atoms and are not just confined to molecules containing lone pairs and pi bonds. For example, the molecule 1,3-butadiene contains two double bonds linked through a single bond, and this molecule has an important resonance form that shows how the p orbitals on the internal carbons of the double bonds can overlap. In this four-atom pi system, the four electrons involved, two electrons from each double bond, are delocalized over all four carbons of the molecule, and this resonance structure shows this well. Of course, we could have also pushed electrons in the opposite direction to generate another alternative resonance form of this molecule. And finally, it's worth mentioning benzene. Benzene is a cyclic pi system in which we can generate a resonance structure just by shifting double bonds around like so. The resulting resonance structure is equivalent to what we started with. We just shifted the positions of the double bonds. And what this shows us is that in benzene, really all six of the pi electrons are delocalized over all six carbons. That means that the resonance hybrid for benzene looks something like this with partial double bond character between all adjacent carbons in the molecule. 
Hopefully these examples help you see that the structural determinants of a delocalized pi system, how we recognize a delocalized pi system within a molecule, just comes down to recognizing the importance of resonance. And these sources and sinks that we've seen previously, like pi bonds, non-bonding lone pairs, pi star anti-bonding orbitals, and empty atomic orbitals. Just as these structural features were kind of the key to recognizing the relevance of resonance to a molecule, they're also the key to recognizing delocalized pi systems because the essence of resonance when it comes to molecular orbitals is that it points to the presence of a delocalized pi system within a molecule. Briefly, here are a few more examples of pi systems. All of these are three atom pi systems. And what I'll do here is show you the resonance hybrid in each case. In the allyl cation, there are two pi electrons, two electrons engaged in resonance, spread out over all three atoms of the pi system. And so the resonance hybrid would look something like this, with the positive charge drawn in the middle to indicate its delocalization, or actually better, is to show that there's partial positive charge in the two end carbons of this molecule. The allyl anion is almost identical to the allyl cation. It's just that we've added two more electrons to the pi system, leaving us with negative charge in the molecule shared by the two end carbons rather than positive charge. The carboxyly anion shown here is analogous to the allyl system in that it's a three atom pi system with negative charge shared by the two oxygens on the end of the pi system. And the amide is interesting because there's significant double bond character between carbon and nitrogen, the consequences of which you'll see in more detail if you go on and take a biochemistry course. The nitro group is isoelectronic with the carboxylate anion. We've just taken out carbon and put in nitrogen. In essence, we've added one more proton to the carbon nu nucleus to change carbon to nitrogen. And so the resonance hybrid here is highly analogous. The nitrogen atom is actually fully positive. Notice that its formal charge is positive in both resonance forms. But the NO bonds are both partial double bonds, and the negative charge is shared by both of these oxygen atoms, just as it is in the carboxylate anion. The last thing I want to mention is something about the orbital structure of atoms within conjugated systems. To recognize the number of pi electrons within a conjugated system and understand how we can engage resonance when looking at conjugated systems, we really need to appreciate hybridization and how many electrons are located in the unhybridized p orbital for an atom that's part of a conjugated system. We're going to focus on five different atom types within conjugated systems, and we can actually relate heavier atoms back to these, for example, in the same group. So P2 and P3 for phosphorus, S1 and S2 for sulfur, have the exact same orbital structure as those shown here. And the beauty of this is wherever we see these building blocks, we can infer the orbital structure from the atomic number, the type of element that's sitting there, and the number of connected atoms, and that's what the number indicates here. Carbon will always be three, and so we can just write C. N2 means a two connected nitrogen, a nitrogen connected to two other atoms. N3 indicates a nitrogen connected to three other atoms, regardless of the bonding pattern, whether it's single or double bonds. O1 indicates an oxygen connected to only one other atom, and here again, that's regardless of the bonding pattern, single or double. And O2 indicates an oxygen connected to two other atoms, once again, irrespective of the bonding pattern, whether that's single or double bonds. The orbital structures are shown here. One thing to notice is that all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized. This means that every atom has three hybrid orbitals. If that atom is engaged in a pi bond, then any lone pairs on that atom must be occupying hybrids rather than p orbitals. This means that they're not part of the pi system. We can see that, for example, in the N2 case, in the O1 case, and in the O2 case, which is very similar to the N2 case just with an extra electron. These lone pairs and hybrids do not contribute to the pi system, and we can't engage these in resonance. It doesn't make sense, for example, to engage this lone pair in resonance within this molecule. Since that pair of electrons is in a hybrid, it doesn't overlap with the p orbitals on the adjacent carbons. The primary reason we want to think about whether a pair of electrons is in a p orbital or not in a molecule that contains a conjugated system is that we want to think about the pi electron count. The number of electrons within the pi system is important to appreciating its orbital structure since we're going to have to take those pi electrons and put them into pi molecular orbitals in order to develop a picture of the occupancy of the pi molecular orbitals. This will be important later when we talk about aromaticity and we'll see it in action as we look at pi molecular orbitals in this lesson. 
based on these orbital pictures, we can identify the number of pi electrons contributed by that atom. For example, here, carbon is participating in a pi bond, and so it is bringing in one pi electron into the pi system. The other carbon that it's attached to is bringing in a second to establish this pi bond. Same idea with the N2 nitrogen. This one electron in the p orbital indicates that that nitrogen brings in one pi electron to the pi system. The N3 nitrogen contains a lone pair within a p orbital. That means that this building block brings in two pi electrons. With the O1, we're back to one pi electron in the p orbital. And with the O2, we're again back to two pi electrons brought in by this building block. And so again, the big idea here, now that we've seen the orbital structures and filled in the pi electrons is that we can recognize these different atom types within conjugated systems and infer from the atom type alone, whether it's carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, etc., and the number of atoms connected, whether it's one, two, or three, how many pi electrons are contributed by that atom to the pi system and the orbital structure, which electrons are located in hybrid orbitals and which electrons are located in p orbitals.